All right, looks like everyone that's grabbing a seat is got a seat and we're gathered around here. Thank you all. If I could have your attention and we'll get started. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I'm Scott Larson. I'm the Executive Director of the Marshfield Area Chamber of Commerce and Industry. It's my distinct honor and pleasure for this opportunity to be the Master of Ceremonies for the Marshfield Clinic Health System YMCA Ribbon Cutting and Open House. What a great opportunity, and I've had the privilege of being part of the three events now that have taken place with the renovations and the changes up here. Um, back in August of 2017, when the groundbreaking was held, had an opportunity to participate in that. Back in September of 2018, when the Youth Center was had the ribbon cutting, um, again, had the honor of participating in that, and now certainly uh, the great opportunity here to showcase the beautiful renovations to the Y, and um, you all have a chance to see a little later on after this brief program. Uh, I think, too, what this project epitomizes is what the will of a community can do, both from the citizens itself, its corporate citizens, um, government participation, um, all coming together. Uh, I dare say there's not many communities, particularly of this size, that would have a facility like this in its community. And uh, it, is a, it is a tribute to what's going on in Marshfield and how Marshfield is being made new. And this is just one of many projects that are taking place with that. So with that, let's get started with the program. Up first, um, and our distinguished list of speakers is Mayor Bob McManus. Mayor? Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, it's so exciting to be here. I remember when this was uh, just a vision, and many of you had this great vision. What's so great is what people with vision can do. And we're looking at it. I remember, Scott, you brought up a couple years ago, we were out here at the groundbreaking. Many of the people with the vision had the shovels, and then we opened up the, the youth center a while ago, and now today. This is a very exciting day for Marshfield. It's a very exciting day to be here. So I would just like to say that to all of you visionaries, to all of you people that put it through, to all those late nights when, are we going to do it? Can we do it? You did it. And the community is the big recipient of what you do and your vision, and we are so thankful. So on behalf of myself as mayor, your common council, and all the citizens of Marshall, Marshfield, thank you very much for what you do, and thank you for calling Marshfield home. Thank you. Mayor, thank you for those comments. Up next is Chris Laurent. Chris is the Senior Vice President of Business Development and President of Senair Solutions. So Chris, come on up. Thank you. Um, so I was here actually at the uh, groundbreaking a year ago and uh, things have changed dramatically. Um, it, we're very grateful. Uh, Sinair is a group that's based in Lansing, Michigan, and um, we contributed something called the New Markets Tax Credit, which is a program that was created by Congress uh, over a decade ago. And we partnered with a group called Forward Community Investments. Um, is Sally Martiniak here yet? Okay, well, Sally, Sally contributed, together we contributed uh, $15 million in new markets credits. Um, they're, I point out that they're unique uh, in that to do a development like this, we as uh, Americans have relatively few, uh, few tools to make something like this happen. So it's a vital resource. If you support this kind of thing, make sure that your congressperson knows uh, how important this is to the community. Um, and it's important to me. I grew up in a community called Mazomani, Wisconsin, which is about 20 minutes west of Madison. And um, it, it was a nice place. Uh, I, 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 I focused a lot of my career on building cities, but over the last decade or so, I've really doubled down in my effort in small town. And, and it's communities like Marshfield that really epitomize how great our state is. So thank you for allowing us to participate, and, and congratulations on work well done. Chris, thank you very much for your uh, effort towards the project. 
Uh, up next is an individual who's um, worn several hats as it related to this project undertaking both in um, from her two roles one as uh, being uh, employed by the Marshall Clinic Health System and the other by being a, a member of our Mackey Board of Directors who's also on our executive committee and is our current secretary so Melissa Breen if you would come on up I know the program says Matt Eckelberg, and um, so I will try to do as good a job as Matt would do. I will say what, Matt, uh, what Scott talked about is exactly, um, I have worn a number of hats with this, and so this project is very near and dear to my heart. I have been part of the Marshfield community now for just over three years, and when I first arrived as a member of the health system, Dr. Turney and Dr. Murley asked me during my very first week if I would join them at a meeting to discuss this partnership. Um, at that meeting, Dave and Tammy were there as well, and at that meeting the decision was made to move forward, and Dr. Turney turned to me and said, okay, now go make this happen. <laughs> this partnership happened, so this is very near and dear to my heart. Um, and there really could have been no greater introduction to this um, community. I was able to work with Dave and Tammy and Rochelle and John. And just three short years later, we're here to celebrate another jewel in our Marshfield community with the celebration of this ribbon cutting. This beautiful facility is so much more than a building, more than a place to work out. My kiddo runs around this track three times a week with a 50-pound pack on his back. This is a place with a heart where people can come to connect and build relationships and support one another. I was recently talking to another um, person that has recently been adopted by this wonderful community and she was sharing the story of her son who um, found the Marshfield Clinic when he, or the Marshfield Clinic YMCA when he got here and um, as a place to play basketball, but it was more than that. It was a place that was safe. It was a place for him to develop and gain a ton of confidence. And since then, because of the development that he had and the people that he met here, he was able to actually um, branch out and explore different parts of this wonderful community. And in addition to that, she recently told me that he actually had his very best report card ever. So, um, and she credits a lot of that to what he um, was able to accomplish because of working here. That is what this facility means to our community. Whether it is a kiddo looking for a place to hang out and play basketball, or those of us of a different age looking for a place to meet up with friends. No matter your age, this is a place to connect and connections are what community is all about. As both a member of the Mackey Board and employee of the health system, I am excited to see the impact of this organization will have on this special community and proud to have played a tiny part in bringing this to fruition. Thank you. Melissa, we're glad you're able to wear several hats. We appreciate having you here in the community. Uh, up next is again another individual who had played a, a role in helping make this project take place. Um, that individual is James Simmons, Vice President, Community Development Banking, uh, specializing in New Market Tax Credits Group, Chase Bank. James? Thanks so much, Scott. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, let me start by thanking the YMCA for the opportunity to be with you here today to celebrate this beautiful new facility here in Marshfield. Uh, on behalf of Chase, I'd also like to thank Sinair and Forward Community Investments for the commitment of New Markets tax credit allocation that made our participation in this project possible. Uh, without the support of these organizations, the YMCA's donors and members, and of course the leadership team at the YMCA itself, uh, this would not be the state of the art building you see here today. Uh, the YMCA and their partners at the Marshfield Clinic are both important pillars in the local community. And this new facility will help them both provide new opportunities for youth, families, and seniors to live healthy, happy, and active lives. Uh, through my role at the Community Development Banking Group at Chase, I count myself truly uh, fortunate to work with impactful organizations like these throughout the Midwest. Uh, the financing we provided to this project with Sinair and FCI represents just part of our broader commitment uh, to the communities where we live and work. Our team at Chase is dedicated to supporting nonprofit and for-profit enterprises by providing loans, investments, and tax credit services that meet the needs of low and moderate income communities across the United States. Here in Wisconsin alone, since 2008, we've invested $134 million in new markets and historic tax credit equity, leveraging over $325 million uh, in total investment to support community development projects just like this one. 
Uh, this is in addition to over $150 million in financing to preserve and create nearly 1,500 units of affordable and mixed income housing. Uh, we're committed to helping develop and strengthen vibrant communities across the country, and we're so proud to have supported the YMCA here in Marshfield to further that commitment locally. Uh, thank you again to the YMCA, to Mayor McManus, and everyone here today for the opportunity to help dedicate this incredible facility. Uh, thanks, and enjoy the rest of the event. Likewise, thank you, James, for bringing that expertise to this project. Uh, up next is uh, the individual um, responsible, whose company was responsible for the major construction aspect of, of this project. Uh, please welcome Dave Voss, President and CEO, Myron Construction. Thanks, Scott. I had a nice long speech planned for today. But since we all really want to just go home and get these damn long pants off and get shorts on <laughs> and get a sarsaparilla on our hands, we're going to make it short. World class. When I walked through the doors today, that's the first thing I thought about was world class. This is a world class facility for you folks right here in Marshfield. There are cities 10 times your size that can only dream of having something like this what behind us. So somebody brought up, I think it was the mayor, you have to have a vision. You have to have someone that can sit down and dream. Hang with me guys, I know that's a fluffy word. But you gotta dream, right? Many years ago, someone sat down and dreamed. Someone came up with a goal of what this facility, the Y, should be in Marshville. No one in this room or no one in this area right now understands the amount of time that that takes to dream and to have a vision. But then once we get that, right, we get that all done and this is what we want, we need the almighty dollars, right, to make it work. My next world class people that I want to talk about, Marshfield Clinic, you are so blessed to have these folks in your community. Again, they stepped up and made the lead contribution for the wonderful facility we are gonna enter today. Not surprising, the folks like Dr. Tierney and all the rest of the great physicians and administration folks that are over at Marshall Clinic, world class. Rail Transport, I saw their name. World class transportation folks, again, Big donors that stepped up and said, this is our community, and we want to stand behind it. Ladies and gentlemen, things don't happen like that unless you have those type of people. And please, if you do nothing else today, make sure you walk up to one of those people and say thanks. Because without that, we wouldn't be here today. John Nystrom, here's a guy, huh? He's a character. Folks, let me tell you something. We build a lot of whys throughout the state of Wisconsin. You cannot understand what a gem you have with John Nystrom. You know, most people look at an executive director as, you know, a job or maybe, you know, something I'm going to spend the next five, ten years at. This is in this guy's blood. This wasn't a migrant job. This wasn't a why job. This was John's job. That's how he took it. This is my world, and it better be right. You can't build for anybody that has a better attitude than that. You really can't. I think it's important because, you know, Myron's not from Marshfield, and everybody says, oh, we got that contractor from a long ways away. I think it's important I tell you some of the subcontractors, okay, from Marshfield that worked on your Marshfield Y. And there's a lot, so I just wanted to run through them. Alamo Retail Solutions, American Asphalt, Braun Concrete, Comfort Systems, Heating and Cooling, Earth Incorporated, Mauer Roofing, McMillan Electric, Rigo Plumbing and Heating, Shallows Nursery. All folks that employ people right here in Marshfield built your Marshfield Y. 
That was very important to you when we interviewed, and we wanted to make sure that we, you know, hung to our promise that we would have Marshfield people build the Marshfield Y. I want to take one second, if you may, if I may, with your permission, and I want to introduce some folks that were very instrumental on our behalf, okay? Um, first of all, our project executive and folks from Meyer, just raise your hand. Project executive for us was Tony Creighton. Tony, raise your hand. Project manager, Lee Spindler. Lee's about four foot two, so maybe <laughs> step on the table, Lee, or something like that. Um, our, our project superintendent that finished the project, Steve Beckman. Project accountant, Danella Isburner, and project administrator, Joel Kaka. Folks from Myron, job well done. Job well done. I'd be remiss if I didn't take just a second, again with your permission, to talk about our superintendent that started this job and probably took it to 80, 85, well, I guess 90%. This is a tough one for me. Dustin White was our superintendent on this job. Third generation, white person and white family that worked at Migrant. <clears throat> Dustin was home on, on a weekend and um, was electrocuted doing what he loved to do best, and that was uh, woodcrafting. I dare say I think he was making something for this why. I don't know for sure. I was never told, but I think so. Dustin represented the White family. He represented Myron probably better than any other person I know. And I have to tell you, to learn Dustin, you have to learn the story I'm going to tell you. St. Norbert College, we've done 10 projects, 10 buildings for St. Norbert College. Our superintendent for five of them was Norb Chesney. So think about that. St. Norbert College, they called him St. Norbert. Oh, isn't that interesting? After the fifth job, Norb retires. The president of the college came to me and I thought someone had died. He said, Dave, what are we possibly going to do? Who are you going to replace St. Norbert with? I said, I think I got just the guy. I'm going to give you Dustin White. He said, if I don't like him, I'm going to call you. I said, you got that. Three weeks later, he called me. He said, Dave, here I am. I said, what's the matter? This Dustin White guy. I said, what's the problem, Tom? He doesn't talk much. He doesn't say anything. And when he talks, he's so damn polite, I don't know how to answer. <laughs> I said, Tom, that's the way he is. He's a doer. He's not a talker. He's going to lead by his actions, not by his words. Six months later, Tom called me again. He said, Dave, can you help me? I don't even remember. St. Norbert. We got St. Norbert times three. That's the kind of individual that we had, Bill Lior Marshall Y. Dustin White. Please give me just a second and a small prayer for Dustin and his family. Thank you. Terrific guy, terrific family. We'll be missed forever. So, with that, I'm going to end. I want to thank you. I want to thank Dr. Tierney. I want to thank John. I want to thank Dave Meissner for allowing Myron and giving Myron the chance to show you what we can do for placing your trust in us. It was a long shot. You had a lot of local people, and you picked us. And we wanted to make sure that we performed for you. When I walk through the building today, ladies and gentlemen, I think you'll agree we did okay. We did all right. Thank you so much, City of Marshfield, for the opportunity to build your dream. Thanks. Dave, thank you. Thank you for those comments. Um, thank you to Myron and your attention to detail for this project, and thank you for your utilization of local contractors. We appreciate that very much. Up next, our next speaker, uh, certainly an individual that the community um, knows very well, has always been extremely active here in the community, 
and is one of those individuals, if you want a project done, that's one of these individuals that you turn to and, and that's what happens. They make sure, he makes sure it gets done. Let me introduce Dave Meisner, Chair, Marshfield Area YMCA Board. Dave. Thank you. Uh, welcome everyone. On behalf of myself and the YMCA Board, we are so pleased you could spend this time with us. Talk about world class. When you have an organization like Myron and the number of people that work for them, world class starts at the top. And I have gotten to know Dave Voss over the last few years, and he is world class. Thank you, Dave. This is all about people. You know, we're, we're honoring or we're uh, looking at the building today, but it's about the people. The people in this community, the people that serve in that building, and the people that made it happen. Every great dream begins with a dreamer. This dream began, began with an idea of bringing partners together to provide better services and more efficient services for the families of our community. Today, that dream has been realized. Together, we brought the many services under one roof, including Wood County Head Start, Marshfield Clinic Youth Net Program, Marshfield School District Alternative School, and Marshfield Clinic Health Systems Healthy Living Programs. Today, our community is a better place. Every great dream begins with a dreamer. We told our stories again and again. You listened, you heard, and you took action. For my wife Tammy and myself, there are simply no words that can express the greatest appreciation that we have to all our donors, your generosity, and your commitment to this project. Many times we were told the vision was too bold and too far reaching. Be sure to visit the donor wall that is by the stairway along the south lobby. I would like to take this opportunity to thank our founder donors as you led us to the way to the completion and the success of this vision. Marshall Clinic Health Systems, Dr. Turney and Dr. Murley. Many meetings were had, even tears shed, but you came through because you know this project would not have happened without you. Everett and Dolores Rail, Rick and Tammy Rail. Many meetings with Everett and Rick. I was shocked by your humbleness and your interest in our community and the generosity you show to this community, not only in this project, but many others. Your humble beginnings still show today and will ever show, and you are a exa great example to our children, your children, and all the children of our surrounding community. J.P. Adler family, American Asphalt of Wisconsin, a division of the Mathy Construction, Chase, Sinair, Forward Bank, Forward Community Investments, H&S Manufacturing, Mid-State Truck, Nasonville Dairy, Nelson Jamison, Simplicity Credit Union, George Sparks in memory of Peggy, and Mike and Sherry Trulin. Every dream begins with a dreamer. Yes, John Nystrom is a dreamer. This would not have been possible without his dedication and his leadership. I would just like to read one paragraph from a board member that was sent to me. John exemplifies his drive and determination when he speaks about future visions for the Y. His uniqueness being as he speaks highly of 
colleagues, and team members. When he describes success and future opportunities for the Y, he speaks about the team that there is, not only the board, and, he rec and the members that are within the Y. He re recognizes every team member that with the John, his topics are motivating and vision. He never talked poorly of any team member or of any other organization, a rarity in today's world. John, thank you for your dedication and for the vision and your love and passion for the youth of our community and for just helping be our friend. Today as you walk through and end your day, I would like to leave you with this one final thought, a quote by Harriet Tubman. Every great dream begins with a dreamer. Always remember you have within you the strength, the patience, and the passion to reach for the stars, to change the world. Thank you all. Now I have the opportunity to introduce the neat next speaker. And I mentioned before that we are all just people. And sometimes some of us look up to people and think they are untouchable or people are above us and we forget that we are all just people. Susan Turney is that person. She carries a tremendous amount of responsibility, but at the end of the day, she's just Susan Turney mom, grandma, wife, and community member. And I introduce to you Susan Turney, CEO of Marshall Clinic Health System. It's a, a great pleasure to be here and thank you so much. Um, when people talk about dreamers, um, I'm not sure if Dr. Murley was able to come. Oh, there he is here. He, I know he had an emergency today, but um, he has told this story many times, and he said, you know, Sue Turney's dreams are my worst nightmares. <laughs> so, John, your dreams <laughs> have become a reality and are not a nightmare at all. When you think about where this project was, three years ago, when there was so much uncertainty in our community. When Marshall Clinic Health System decided to uh, uh, work with the willing partner, Ascension uh, St. Joe's Hospital, and acquire the hospital, we knew that we had secured our future. And I think a lot of people changed their attitude and realized that it was a time to celebrate and really invest in what we need in this community to bring families and friends together to really share in a vibrancy that uh, is necessary for all of the towns that we live in. And I appreciate your comment about Mazomani. We, we live in, um, our service area has small towns. We're not in any metropolitan areas. We have um, uh, 60 clinic sites, and most of them are in communities of less than 2,000 people. So to have something like this in Marshfield is truly an achievement that um, is just so heartwarming to me. It means so much to me, having been part of this community for over 30 years. You know, a rural population is a good thing. A rural population is very committed, dedicated, hardworking people. And we don't have a lot of in and out migration from our communities, but that's a good thing. Because we live here, we work here, and our families are raised here. And we want to keep that structure so that we can continue to be successful in our communities. And it is partnerships like this that help those dreams come true. You know, many times we think about Marshall Clinic Health System when we think about sick care and we think about a person's health and how complex it can be. But a lot of things with respect to health are not that complex. It's really about the strength of the social relationships. It's really about 
access to community resources, it's access to good education, and certainly it's access to economic stability. And when you have um, economic stability in your community and you can offer this type of resource to anybody in the community, we know we have a true success story. So what I would say is that if, as we've created this community health hub, and you see it's not just Marshall Clinic and it's not just the Y, it's the school system, it's Head Start. It's really looking at people's needs throughout the continuum of life, and we need to continue to provide for that. Um, you know, and it is hard in a community of this size because we've had a lot of efforts in fundraising activities. And we have a lot of new buildings that are a credit to this community. But when you see the number of people that got behind this effort and realized that it was our future, it's just um, nothing but um, overwhelming to me to know how much people care in this community. So I think as we um, uh, look at the true power of partnerships and really understand that relationships mean everything. And yes, Dave and Tammy and I did have some tears together, and that's okay, because hard work requires a lot of effort and a lot of grit, and it doesn't happen magically, but it does happen because of those dreams that people do have. So I really want to thank all of you for coming out today and uh, standing in the heat and know that you'll have a great time and opportunity to tour the facility. Um, we've been through it a couple of times uh, uh, over the last few months and it is nothing short of remarkable. So again, I would like to thank all of you. I would like to thank uh, John, the YMCA Board of Directors, and every person that was somehow involved in making this dream become a reality. So now I guess it's my chance to introduce Sherry. Uh, Sherry Trulin is the Vice Chair of the YMCA Board of Directors, and she will also um, offer some comments about this very uh, uh, significant moment in the history of the YMCA and Marshfield. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Um, I've been honored to share this story of impact with you. This YMCA member's story demonstrates how working in partnership with each other has a profound impact on an individual, but also on a community. Carl Zimmerman was on a snowmobile trip with friends in northern Wisconsin in February of 2016. The group was quitting for the day, and they were using a side trail to get back. No surprise, he always took shortcuts. Carl recalls, the guy in the lead didn't see a downed tree on the trail. I was in the center of the trail and hit the tree with my leg, just below the knee. The impact was so great that it almost took my leg off. I continued to drive and did not tell my friend who was in the lead. In fact, I did not tell him until we were back and I drove my sled up onto the trailer. At that point, Carl told his friend he hurt his leg and would need an ambulance. He did not tell them how bad it was hurt. He just waited on the sled until the ambulance arrived. That accident is what started a long road of healing for Carl. Carl went from an ambulance on a winter road to the Marshfield Clinic Health System in, Park, in Flambeau, at the Flambeau Hospital in Park Falls to a helicopter ride to the Marshfield Clinic Health System in Marshfield Prior to boarding the helicopter, Carl thought he should notify his wife, Kathy. Well, I would think. <laughs> he, he, he later, he, to say he would be late, to say he would be late, and that he had a little accident. When Kathy returned the call to the hospital, she was told Carl was coming in by helicopter. Imagine that phone call, folks. It was a very trying time for the family. Carl felt badly for them, and especially for his wife. After arriving at the Marshfield Medical Center, Carl underwent surgery around midnight under the skilled care of Mar Marshfield Clinic orthopedic surgeon Darren Cortine and his team. Carl doesn't remember much about that time, but he does remember the care he received from the Marshfield Clinic orthopedic surgeon Dr. David Polga and his team who treated his wound over time. He recalls Dr. Polga returning 
from a hunting trip early because he couldn't get Carl and his injuries off his mind. So Dr. Polga came back to the research op to research options for continuing to treat the wound. Carl is very thankful for that because if those options didn't work, he would have lost his leg. A couple of weeks later, the wound started to close. A, screen, a skin graft followed and the wound eventually closed. Therapy and regaining strength was the next step. Once it was safe to go into the water, Carl turned to the YMCA and the use of their warm water pool for water walking five days a week. Carl first came to the Y using a wheelchair. He eventually graduated to crutches, then used two canes, and then the last year arriving at the YMCA without the use of a cane or braces. Carl credits top quality medical care and access to the YMCA like ours for his recuperation. This long road has brought Carl to where he is today. He walks unaided, rides Goldwing motorcycle, still rides snowmobile. Carl goes to the YMCA five days a week and keeps working on his strength. He enjoys the people he meets at the Y and the social connections he has made. Looking back at the accident, Carl says, it's amazing. Just keep pushing yourself. The alternative isn't good. I'm 78 years old and I don't want to quit. Other than that, it takes me longer to do things. I don't feel that I am restricted. I can even kneel in church. In February of 2017, Carl was back on his snowmobile and is planning a snowmobile trip to Deadwood, South Dakota this coming winter. He said, I'll tell you, I was so pleased with the Marshville Clinic and the YMCA. Those two, they saw me through. Thank you, Carl, for sharing your story. We are so happy for your recovery and are humbled to have been a part of this journey with you. You stand, Carl, please. <laughs> And with that, I leave you the last speaker of the day, our CEO, Mr. John Nystrom. Okay, so I stand between you and air conditioning, uh, so I'm gonna be pretty brief. Um, <clears throat> this day's been a long time coming, and it wouldn't be possible without all of you, so thank you. Choosing a community in which we live and raise our families lies close to our hearts. We carefully assess community offerings to assure our children receive every opportunity to grow into caring, responsible adults. A, vib a vibrant, growing community such as ours emerges when our offerings are balanced. And the YMCA helps do that for Marshfield and our surrounding communities. It will be a cornerstone of our community for years to come. The Marshfield Clinic Health System YMCA is committed to engaging our communities through, tra through traditional and innovative services and by offering a modern state-of-the-art facility while remaining grounded in our values of caring, honesty, respect, and responsibility. Through our partnerships and collaborations, we are uniquely positioned to do what we do best, provide total health, and diverse programs to families, adults, youth, and all health seekers in the Marshfield area. The realization of this facility has redefined our YMCA as a gathering place for all. None of this would be possible without the support of our community or our donors, so thank you. It also would not be possible without the dedication and commitment of our Changing Lives, Building Futures Capital Campaign Leadership Team. So, if you are here, please stand as I read your name and allow us to recognize your commitment to the YMCA and our community. Uh, but only if you're able. So, uh, first of all, Marilyn Hardiker, John and, John and Stephanie Hayes, Jeff and Rochelle Hill, Tammy and David Meisner, Marty Reinhardt, 
Mike Schmidt, Bill and Claudia Senholz, Janet Stewart, and Mike and Sherry Trulin. Thank you all uh, for uh, making this a reality. Um, it, it, it was an absolute pleasure working with you to, to accomplish this. Um, also, thank you to the many team members that you recruited to be on your team that helped us uh, tell our story and reach our vision, many of whom are here today. So to conclude, I would like to share a quote from Walt Disney. Keep moving forward, opening new doors and doing new things, because we're curious and curiosity keeps leading us down new paths. I'm looking forward to what's next for our future. So uh, what I'd like to do, it's time to actually cut a ribbon now. Uh, so I would like to direct your attention over here to the door and I would like for uh, Sally, uh, if you've arrived, Mike Trulin, Dr. Turney, David Meisner, Tammy Meisner, Carl, um, Sophia, uh, Mike Schmidt, Jeff Hill, Sherry Trulin, John and Stephanie Hayes, Marilyn, uh, Marty and Janet, if you could join us over here by the door and we'll direct our attention over there. And then um, uh, Scott, if you stand here, you can count us through it. And they say to me I should be able to handle the scissors, so here we go. All right, looks like they're ready. On a count of three, one, two, three. Thank you. Well, thank you. And it's official. Thank you everyone for attending today's ceremony for the Marshfield Clinic Health Systems YMCA ribbon cutting. Uh, the formal program is over, but we 